In this video, we're going to measure the height of anything. Oh, I mean anything available here. This guy posted his 100 foot cliff jump experience on YouTube. Unfortunately, Mark Rober, a former NASA engineer, saw this video and he made a cliff height timer. It turned out that he only jumped around 61 feet. Eventually, when he learned about this, he quickly changed the name of the video to 70 foot cliff jump. Oh, not even close to 61 feet. Did you know that you can actually get the height of tall objects and as well as your own height by just using your watch? Well, thanks to science for this Newton's second equation of motion. where distance is actually the height or the distance traveled by the object equivalent to initial velocity times time traveled plus one half of acceleration due to gravity times time traveled squared but since it's a free falling body but since we're just going to drop the ball or the object to measure the height the initial velocity is automatically zero on the other hand the default value for the acceleration due to gravity is either 9.8 meter per second squared 32.17 feet per second squared we're now able to derive this formula from the previous equation okay so let's apply it Got point six second. My father stands around five seven, so I got point six second. So that means by using the formula, point six times point six times sixteen is equivalent to five point seven six feet. Height of the car. We can now conclude that we can get the height of really tall objects by just using your stopwatch and using this formula. Just listen to the sound as the ball reaches the ground. So, can you calculate my height? got me interested on trying to break some bottles. All you need is a beer bottle and a water in it. Actually, I have tried breaking the bottle many times with just my bare hand slapping on its top. Oh. However, little did I know, it was really hard to do in my part. Therefore, I went to a hardware store and bought a rubber mallet to be used to strike on its top. However, the only available mallet was the large one. Hmm. Fair enough. And I also bought a beer to be used in the experiment later. Okay, I got some visitors here. <laughs> What's your name? Jomar. Jomar, hello Jomar. What's your name? Kit Kit. Okay, I'm here with Jomar and Kit Kit and they will be witnessing how I'm gonna break some bottles. <laughs> okay, now let's break some bottles. Ah, 
One more, one more, one more. Almost there. One, two. No! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Have you figured out why the bottom of the bottle traps out when you slap on its top? Is it because of this or this? You know what? Some researchers recorded bottle breaking tricks using high speed cameras before, during, and after the bottle breaks. Their video showed that striking the bottle does not instantly destroy it, but instead the impact that causes the bottle to speed downward. Hmm, interesting. When the fluid or water accelerates from one area to another, it leaves a gap where it was an area of lower pressure. The differences in acceleration that different parts of the bottle experience mean that the liquid at the bottom of the bottle is under less pressure than elsewhere within the bottle. If the acceleration experienced by the bottle is great enough, the reduced pressure causes some of the water at the bottom to vaporize. A drop in pressure can make liquid vaporize if the temperature remains the same. Vaporized liquid turns into bubbles. The process known as cavitation. Since heating the bottle accelerates it only briefly, the pressure at the bottom of the bottle quickly returns to normal. Thus, the bubbles collapse faster than they were primarily formed. And these reactions ultimately crack the bottom of the bottle. Okay, to prove that air pressure is not the one that's causing the bottle to break, we going? have to cover the bottle. But why water? I'm glad you asked. Oh! oh. <laughs> It just fizzes. <laughs> this breaking effect does not work with fizzy water or carbonated drink because it already has bubbles in it. Though slapping a bottle filled with such carbonated fluid will cause bubbles to form, these bubbles are filled up with carbon dioxide and just float away instead of collapsing at the bottom of the bottle. And the crowd on the ground looking up, they have a visual on him right now. Say you're about to jump from a plane 25,000 feet from the ground. That sounds freaking terrifying, right? But the question is, how do you survive that skyfall with no parachute? His name is Luke Akins. He made a history by becoming the first jumping 25,000 feet with no parachute. Take note, without a parachute. It is really terrifying. How did he do that? The clue is conservation of momentum. But first, what do we mean by momentum? What is momentum? Ano po ba momentum? Oo nga po, hindi ko din po alam yun. In physics, momentum refers to the quantity of motion that an object has. It can be defined as mass in motion. All objects have mass. So if an object is moving, then it has momentum. It has its mass in motion. It's like an inertia in motion. To explain this further, I have here a balloon. I bet you've blown on this stuff before. Device something like a balloon racket and see what will happen.
pressure that's pushing air molecules out that way. The balloon's conservation momentum has to go the other way. This is by Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is how rockets work. You can't use a propeller in space because there's nothing to push against. So rockets are like throwing some stuff, chemical combustion from their back and make them go to the opposite direction out there in space. So you're moving fast. You have this momentum. How do you stop it? Well, the moment you try to stop something from moving, that shows change in momentum. Or in other words, impulse. I have here an egg. Throw this against the wall and it broke. I have here another egg. Throw this against a cloth and it didn't break. Same speed but what is the only difference between the two? Time. The time was very short against the wall, therefore the force was big. While in the other one, the time was big, therefore the force was small. Same with parkers. They jump off crazy things. But what do they usually do? They either roll, slide, or flip. Why? Because this extended time until they momentarily stop. Do long jumpers land on asphalt or concrete? No, they land on sand. What's the deal with the sand? It extends their time, achieving change in momentum, until they safely stop. On the other hand, if you want to increase your momentum, say in archery, you're stretching the bow to launch the arrow, and the more you stretch it out, the farther the distance the arrow can get, and the bigger the force released. So, going back to Luke Aiken's world record 25,000 feet jump without a parachute, his name is John Cruikshank. Cruikshank? Cruikshank. Whatever, I'm not really sure if I pronounced it properly. Anyway, he is the civil engineer who designed the systems that made the amazing skyfall possible. Luke Aiken's two and a half minute free fall at a speed of around 190 km an hour ended with a soft landing, thanks to the 30 by 30 meter net structure designed by the civil engineer, aka the flytrap. The net was suspended approximately 20 story high by four 61 meter cranes and was made from a fiber called this, which is typically used in the fishing industry to catch tuna. All right, thumbs up. It got real at this point. All right, boys, here we go. Ready, set, see ya. Once I was out in free fall, I decided to throw a couple transitions. I hadn't planned to do that, but once I was out there, it seemed like the right thing to do. I'd never done them in free fall without a parachute on. I'd done 25,000 foot jumps before, but this one seemed like a long free fall at the beginning. I kept working my way in closer and closer to the target. About halfway down, I take my oxygen system off my mask, I hand that thing over to Andy, and then I don't have to worry about that thing anymore. I'm back to only focusing on the target. A little more than needed, I was a little short. I wanted to walk my way into the target. About 2,000 feet, I was perfect on the lights, dead center. At that point, I slid forward a little bit. I started to back up. I backed up too far. I started moving around. And now I have a zero ground speed. I know I'm in the net. I'm not exactly centered. I'm off to the side a little bit, but I know I'm in the safe zone. So now I just got to concentrate on a nice clean rollover and wait for the impact. There goes the chutes. And that demonstrates the conservation of momentum. That was really an extreme engineering that seemed like cannot be done, but simplified it and proved it is possible. That explains how Luke Aikens was able to survive that 25,000 feet skyfall with no parachute. And that answers the question, how did he survive a 25,000 feet free fall with no parachute? But of course, provided that you have some kind of engineering system in place to catch you safely. Why do people need to study this stuff or this momentum stuff? Maybe because momentum is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Since momentum is a direction, it can be used to predict the resulting direction and speed of motion of objects after they collide. Thus can be used in certain applications in real life like airbags built for cars to somehow prevent or reduce the impact of the driver against the steering wheel or dashboard during car collisions or accidents.
Hey guys, what's up? In my previous video, we discussed about the third law of motion and the conservation of momentum. So for today's video, I have this really cool build called CO2 rocket launcher that will further demonstrate this third law of motion. Okay guys, so this comprises of a PVC pipe, three quarter inch PVC pipe, three quarter inch end cap, CO2 cartridge, this carbon dioxide cartridge, CO2 cartridge. Okay guys, so this CO2 cartridge or CO2 cylinder is most commonly used for bicycle tires, airsoft, and beverage, and more. And also we need the ultimate tool for puncture, which is a thumbtack. I already fixed the thumbtack into the end cap here. Okay, so let's make a rocket launcher. Here we go. This is the end cap, the thumbtack, and we have to snug, snug it to here. Okay. Once the lid of this cartridge punctured, this cartridge will fly out at least 9,200 feet high or more. <laughs> Demonstrating Newton's third law of motion, aka law of action and reaction. In every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay guys, so we're gonna try another one because ano, it's really fun na magpalipad nito. <laughs> palipad. So, kanina ano, dapat itataktak ko siyang ganun. So, hindi ko na siya ginawa dahil <laughs> sumirit na siya. Ibig sabihin, um, napaka-smooth ng pagka-puncture ng ating thumbtack kanina. Okay, so ito yung next try natin. Okay. <laughs> Mini ni Papa. Okay. So tingnan natin guys kung saan. Ayun, binibilang ni Papa. <laughs> Naka 11 meters din naman. Yan. So malamig Papa. Okay. Isa pa, gawa pa tayo ng isa. Tapos mamay, slow mo natin. <laughs> Nagulat ako. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try again. Another CO2 rocket. Let's go! <laughs> again, 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 again. Gumigit na. <laughs> it's so far! Woo! Here's our cartridge. Ayan, lumamig na naman siya. Woo! Lamig! Nag-release. Na feel mo na malamig talaga siya. <laughs> Nagulat ako nung, pinasir, nung sumikit siya. Kailangan kasi ano, malakas yung pagkaka, ano, pagkakataktak ganun. Hello, mga bata. <laughs> Ay, mga bata. So, yun, nung na-release yung carbon dioxide sa loob ng cylinder, nung, hello! <laughs> Okay, so nung na-release yung carbon dioxide natin from this cylinder, lumamig siya. Feel natin lamig. Ang lamig! Yan. Okay. Doing experiments with you guys, learning science with you guys, always feels so great. So, see you around next time. As always, stay safe, stay curious. Please subscribe! <laughs>